Hey, we're, you see, we're doing announcements from up here, which is not my idea, but it's because of this little Facebook thing that we're doing that. That's right. But um, it's good to have them back with us. That's great. You get to preach in front of people, actually. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's gotten to the point where I take a bunch of hecklers yeah. just, just to have faces. <laughs> and Sid's going to hurt on me because he's been preaching to me more than. Oh, no, it's Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Just a couple of things. We're glad that you're sitting with families. That's good. And just make sure you stay uh, together. And um, if you want to, like, shake my hand, but I don't feel comfortable, you're not going to shake my hand, right? Okay. Okay. So we're going to be respectful. If someone doesn't feel, you know, feels like that's unsafe, then respect each other's feelings. I've had to keep six foot distance from her for so long. No. Okay. That's not true. That's not true. And um, the ushers, at the end of the service, the ushers will dismiss you by rows. Just Think like, of it like a wedding. Yeah, just, Somebody just, told me a funeral. No, 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 no. no. no it's like like a, a wedding, wedding right? right? When you're released from your seat. We're going to do that for a while just to make sure that we just have, you know, our foyer in, in proportion to our sanctuary. We've got a huge sanctuary, but a very small foyer. We just want you to feel like it would be better for you to just go ahead and leave the building and do your fellowshipping outside. Okay? And as you leave, as you leave, there's, there will be um, little stands with the offering plates so you can put your cards on. Absolutely. Offerings. But we wouldn't want to get that. Would we would not. Yeah, that's right. No. And um, then we do want you to not stay in the foyer, but feel free to greet one another and talk to each other outside. Yeah, so this, I know, but I'm just repeating. Well, okay. <laughs> this is, I agree. You know, you're starting to do that more these days. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Anyway, it is so good to have you back. Remember, this is life, so my, my mom's going to see you mistreating me. But anyway, <laughs> next Sunday is Father's Day, so we're going to honor all the men. Happy Father's Day, Irvin. Wow. Yeah. Um, we're going to do... Not your father. I know. But you're the father of the children. So. Luke, I'm not your father. Okay. You can go sit down now. All right. Okay. I got it. But anyway, we're doing one of those... It's days. just so fun to be back. You know what I mean? <laughs> We are going to do one of those Father's Day videos, just like we did for Mother's Day. So we want you to record yourself, or maybe record your child, of doing a five-second um, video set of saying, I love my dad because, or you can do, I loved my dad because, in memory of your dad, and send those to the office or to Pastor Missy, and we'll put that together, and um, it will be good. We'll enjoy that next week. Um, it's graduation season. And the last Sunday of June, we were going to be, we will be honoring our graduates. And uh, we, so we have some open houses coming up. Rob and Judy's open house is Saturday, June the 27th, the last Saturday of this month, from 2 to 4 at the church shelter house. So make sure you mark that down, and they will enjoy having you come and celebrate with Robin. And as we've been doing for quite a few weeks, Wednesday devotional. On Wednesday, it's coming Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. You can check that out online. And Randy James will be bringing a devotional for us. So it is great to have you back in the building. And uh, let's worship the Lord. Good morning, those of you that are in the sanctuary with us. Good morning, those of you who are at home and are worshiping along with us today. This is a uh, it's okay maybe to acknowledge it's a little different today. It's been a long time since I led for people that could actually sing back with me. And uh, so I'm, I'm grateful to be able to do this today. Uh, we do want you to know we, we are singing today. Uh, we have been trying to, to be conscious of the different guidelines that are around. Um, and so today, if, if you want to, we are encouraging you to sing, but sing quietly, because what we have found in all of our research is when you sing and really well it out, it's like you're coughing. Uh, so if, if you're, we're at a good distance on the platform here, shouldn't be an issue if you were worried about that. But some people, you might feel like you want to hum along, that's fine. Some of you might want to do sign language. Is Elaine here? If she is, she would, you know, she could do things like that. But we are going to worship this morning. Glad that you're here with us today, and uh, we are grateful that our Savior is here with us this morning. So it's been a long time since I said said that, but will you stand with me? So let's let's worship together this morning as we sing in Christ alone.
I guess you won't be any resistance. But I hope you've been uh, watching the prayer line. That's one of the ways we've been staying connected. Hi. ago that when we had to, when they told us we had to spend 20 seconds washing our hands. I don't know, I always spend 20 seconds. You're welcome to count it. But often I find myself praying for one of those requests on that list. So I'm going to begin today with the Lord's Prayer because I really believe in the Lord's Prayer. And then we're just going to lift our needs before the Lord. I'm going to give you some quiet time after the Lord's Prayer just to lift whatever it is you have in your heart. And then I'm going to close for us, okay? Let's begin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. He says, be still. Thank you that we found you faithful during these days. Thank you that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. As we just sang, glorious day, someday, you may return or you may call us home, whatever it is. As Paul said, to live as Christ, to die is gain. He could have put in there, whatever. <laughs> Either way, we win. We give you praise today. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for the earlier gathering. We just thank you for our church, our people, your love in our lives. Every one of the requests that have ascended to you today to the throne of grace, we are confident by faith as we trust you that you have the answers. And it's in the strong name of Christ we pray and all God's people say. Amen.
talking a lot about Easter. We know that Jesus rose from the grave. If it's heavy, come right there. We know that he died, he rose from the grave, he spent some time here on earth with his family and his friends, and we know that he also went to be with God in heaven. But they also promised a gift. Do you remember what the gift was called? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, yes. And that was kind of the beginning of a whole new church in a whole new way. And so a lot of things that they did in the new church is they shared everything. Their stuff, their money, their belongings, not only the story of Jesus and who he is. So I got a big question for you. You ready? Yeah. Is it hard for you to share sometimes? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um, what is something that you would prefer not to share? You don't want to check your candy? Okay. <laughs> like the Swiss cake rolls? I saw those working the other day, right? <laughs> yeah. Who are you hiding from? <laughs> from everybody? Okay, that, that, that's fair. It can be hard to share Swiss cake rolls. Um, and what is something, can you think of anything that you've done recently that you have shared? Have you, have you shared anything with anybody recently? I shared money with my dad. You did share your money with your dad. Who's so you. you got something special for him, didn't you? Yeah. Was that, um, did that make you feel good? Yeah. yeah, because you shared something with somebody else. So anyway, so the early church was sharing a lot of things that they had, and it started getting me thinking about God's love. Now, this is kind of silly, but hopefully it'll help us to remember. So let's just imagine that this is God's love to us. Now, you either can keep it for yourself, or you can help give it to other people, Right? And part of loving God is not only sharing your stuff and your belongings and doing things for other people, but it's also about sharing that love of God. But you have to make a decision about whether you're going to share him. Because if you don't want to, they can't force you to, right? You either choose to keep it to yourself or you choose to share it with other people. Can you grab that water for me? Do you know what happens Watch your head. when you stick this in here? Do you know what will happen to this? What do you think will happen? You'll have to kind of tell us, right? Do you see how it's like expanding and it's spreading out? Remember, look, it's even making the water kind of red too. The color is spreading out, isn't it? And you know what? This kind of, like when I was reading some stuff on this little trick of mine, um, it made me think of God's love because we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want it to expand. We want it to grow. We want it to go to other places. Because part of loving God is not only sharing the things that he blesses us with, but it's also sharing God's story and his love to other people. So that as many people as we can tell um, about God's kingdom, that's our job to do. Love God. Love people. Love people. That's right. Thank you for helping me today, Gabe. to the world. It's a crazy world, isn't it? So what is our witness to the world as Christians, as Christ followers? What is our witness supposed to be like? Well, it was written by Luke, Dr. Luke, some people call him. He's the same Luke that wrote the, the Gospel of Luke. Uh, he's also almost like a news reporter as he shares with us in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. As he begins to look at the activity of the new gathering of people called Christ followers, Luke writes this, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Pastor Missy just talked about that. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. 
And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Luke, like a reporter, is telling us that he has observed these things about the early Christians along with the general public. There were no secrets. There was not a, this was not a secret society. There were no undercover Christians. I may see that, say that again. There were no undercover Christians. They were openly living in the following ways. Let me review what he says. They were attentive to the teaching of the spiritual teachers based on Christ's teaching. And they were all about fellowship and eating together. Just think, it all started. The church started eating together. How does that sound to you? Don't you look forward to getting back to that? Sherry, what have you been doing anyway? Fellowship I have been director. Very bored. You've been very bored, that's right. Uh the place of power and the place of repowering was prayer for them. Uh, they were all about the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper, they were to remember what brought them together in the first place, the life and the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, the basics of the gospel. They experienced miracles. And you know what one of the greatest miracles was? We just saw it. Sharing. They actually learned how to share. Uh... That's better than what we learned in kindergarten, isn't it? Sharing. They experienced those miracles. They were seeing healings. They were seeing signs and miracles, as it says. They were truly glad, Luke says. They were truly and really sincere. And in almost in amazement, he says, everyone was filled with awe at the signs and wonders performed by the apostles. Luke says that they enjoyed the favor of all the people. He says, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. All of those activities just listed were being observed by the general public. People could watch Christians in action, and those were the things they were seeing. Something about those Christians was providing a positive impression. Something about those Christians attracted others to want to join their group and become Christ followers themselves. They were being saved. And you know it all goes back to Pentecost, to the filling of the Holy Spirit. He makes the difference. He makes the difference for our witness to the world. The Holy Spirit makes the difference for our witness to the world. Amen. Where we live, at home, where we work, where we are entertained, where we shop. So I was at the hardware store the other day. Getting some things to take care of my mother's estate. Oh boy, did we have a lot to deal with. Anyway, that's another story. So I'm standing behind a fella, an older fella, yeah, older than me, believe it or not. He was wearing his mask, he was on this side of the plexiglass, and he was yelling through the plexiglass to the cashier. She simply had asked him for his phone number so that she could connect him with his account. And he yelled at her. And then he yelled at her again. He said, did you get it this time? And I thought, my goodness, dude, chill out. Maybe I should have said it, but he might have cocked my head off. I don't know. So it was my turn. What do you do when you're the person that's behind the person that acts that way? Well, you try your best to be kind and and you try your best to accommodate and you thank them and you, you just feel for them because, believe me, it was hard for her to keep her composure when she told him to have a nice day. <laughs> Listen, people are not going to be attracted to our Christ if we are grouchy, harsh, negative, divisive, argumentative, and just plain mean. And let me add, especially on social media. Did Jesus express meanness? Right away, those of you who are familiar with the story, right away want to jump to the cleansing of the temple when he got kind of ticked off at things. But let me remind you that whenever Jesus, a few times you see him upset, it's with those who are mean and those who claim to be religious. Ouch. A quote I found from a fellow I quoted last week uh, in 
one of the commentaries. I just like this, these couple lines. He says, my definition of the church is this, the fellowship of those given by Christ to be to each other what he has been to them. Amen. So that together with Christ, they can be to the world a demonstration of what the new humanity he died and lives to make possible. That's the church. So how is our witness to the world? How is your witness to the world? How is my witness to the world? Folks, if the world ever needed level-headed, kind, smiling, patient, i got to tell you, I don't have a natural smile. There are some people who think I'm mad all the time, and I'm not. My daughters took a while before they realized Dad's not mad. He just doesn't automatically smile. Like some of you just have this wonderful automatic smile. Risa, she just smiles, you know? She just... She's got this beaming smile. I have to work it up. You know, I have to put on the crank and crank it up. But, but I'm smiling. I have to work on it. But I'm doing more of it lately because I want to make sure people understand. It's important for us to be kind to people, to be patient. If the world ever needed level-headed, kind, smiling, patient people, it does now, doesn't it? So I'm heading to church this week, and I'm on Home Road. You know, Home Road is a four-lane road, and it's got a double yellow line down the middle. But apparently my 40 miles an hour, which, by the way, is five over the speed limit. I think it ought to be 40 or 45, but that's not nothing I can do anything about. So I go 40 in hopes that that's okay. Anyway, that's another story. Seems like I had a lot to get off, didn't it? I'm doing my 40 miles an hour, and there's a guy behind me who apparently thought I wasn't going fast enough, so he decided to cross the double yellow into the oncoming lanes, the opposite lanes, to go around me. At the same time, a car next to me in the right lane decided they wanted to go around me too, and the two were going to meet in the middle. Now I'm going to confess. There was a moment when I thought, wouldn't it be a shame if they collided? <laughs> and then a little voice said to me, no. That's not what we want. See, we all have our failing moments. But one of the things you notice if you follow the book of Acts in the early churches, their failing moments were minimized compared to their victory moments because of the filling of the Holy Spirit. They're going to have those moments when we, when we just blow it. But, but when we're filled with the Spirit and we stay filled with the Spirit, we can have a whole lot more victory moments than we do the failed moments. And we have to work on that, don't we? We've got to be filled and refilled so that we have more victory moments. So I have this little illustration. I don't know why, Pastor Misty, we didn't talk, but we're both doing water today. And uh, a little story about the, the little boy whose father told him to take his bucket, take your bucket and go, go to the well and fill it up and then go and take the water and, uh, and water the cows and the horses and the pigs and you can Make sure your pet dog has enough water and all of that. And, and so the little boy went to the well. This is the well, okay? And uh, he started filling up the bucket, but something happened. The water got all over the carpet. Anyway, his father said, son, you got a problem. You got a hole in your bucket. He said, I've got an answer to that. He said, you see this little thing? It's called a cork. Some of you may have to explain what that is. He said, I've got a cork. He said, I want you to put that in the hole in the bucket. I want you to plug the hole. So he plugged the hole. He said, now go back to the well and fill up your bucket. The boy went back to the well and he filled up his bucket. Boy, this better work. <laughs> he filled up the bucket and all of a sudden the water stayed in the bucket. The boy was able to go and take care of what his father told him to do. And that is to make sure that all the animals had enough water. And then his dad said this, if you keep the holes in the bucket plugged, the water will last longer and go farther. Jesus said something very interesting one day. He said, I am the living water. He said, in fact, if you are thirsty, you can come to me and drink. The Bible says that when Jesus said that, he was referring to the Holy Spirit. And we've been talking in the last few weeks, since the day of Pentecost, sometimes those early disciples had to be filled, but they had to be refilled. 
So you have to sometimes refill the bucket. If you can imagine this representing your life, this is your bucket life. You got to plug the holes. And sometimes those holes represent things like maybe you need to make an apology. Maybe you need to tell somebody I'm sorry. Maybe you need to tell the Lord I'm sorry. Maybe you need to tell another person I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe plugging the hole, maybe the cork represents giving forgiveness, even though they don't deserve it. Plug the hole. Maybe it represents rest. Jesus said that he is the one who brings us true, lasting rest. But you know what? Sometimes it just applies to us physically. Have you ever noticed that some people who don't get enough sleep are grouchy? Sometimes plugging the hole means getting back to your personal devotions in a serious way. Sometimes plugging the hole means just attitude adjustment. Sometimes it means confessing sin and being forgiven. Plug the hole. You know, the truth is, we need to fill our bucket from time to time anyway. We have to be refilled with the Holy Spirit anyway. So we need to plug the hole so that the filling goes farther and lasts longer. Let's pray. Father, this is your word, inspired by your spirit. We thank you today that we can call upon your name. There are times, Lord, where we develop a hole in the bucket of our lives and so even though we try to make sure we're refilled and refilled with the Holy Spirit, there are these holes in our lives that need to be attended to. And Lord, sometimes it means asking forgiveness. Sometimes it means offering an apology. Sometimes it means getting the right rest. And whatever it means, Lord, we want your Holy Spirit to fill us completely so that those fillings go farther and last longer. Help us, Lord, we pray. Wherever we're struggling, whatever we're dealing with, the good news is that Jesus is ready to help us. And the Holy Spirit is ready to refill us over and over again. Thank you. We give you praise for what you're doing in our lives today. Before I say the final amen, it's just been a while. I, as your pastor, if you, if you have something, you don't have to tell me, you don't have to say it out loud. But if you would just raise your hand and let me know, pray for you. You're dealing with a particular hole in your bucket, and you'd like for me to pray along with you. Anyone like that? Just raise your hand. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your transparency. Jesus, you saw those hands. You know the hearts. Nothing is too big for you. You said it yourself. Nothing is impossible with God. Praise you, Lord.
God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. 